to the coronavirus pandemic now. South Africa was the first country to sound the alarm about the Omicron variant. Now the wave has passed and other countries are looking to learn from its experience. Data shows how the Omicron variant causes a spike in case numbers because it is highly infectious, a lot more than previous coronavirus variants. And you can see South Africa's fourth wave here was far sharper, but also shorter. Crucially, the Omicron wave has so far resulted in fewer deaths than previous waves. There were also fewer hospitalizations this time around. You can see that in the data here. Uh, that has led some experts to conclude that Omicron is less dangerous. But others have warned that many cases may go unreported or undetected. So the real numbers of cases and deaths could be much higher. They are warning not to underestimate Omicron as a milder variant. Today is an important day for Sipelo Khalivane. Two years ago, financial problems and the pandemic forced him to close his bar and restaurant in Cape Town's Kailicha township. But now he's finally reopening. COVID has taught us a lot of things that you need to put your eggs in different baskets. And also you need to try and think outside the box because, I mean, for me, I don't cast the storm. From whatever bad situation that I'm in, I always look for positive things, better things that I can do instead of complaining. After nearly two years, most lockdown restrictions were lifted, including a nightly curfew. Tourists have once again been pouring into the country. There had been mass cancellations following the discovery of the Omicron variant. Life is slowly getting back to normal here in Cape Town with decreasing numbers in new COVID infections. Data from South Africa suggests although Omicron is much more infectious, the amount of people that were admitted to hospitals was much lower than during previous waves. Many here are hoping that we're seeing the beginning of the end of the pandemic. I so wish that uh, I won't even hear about the, the name COVID. That, that's what we're, we're wishing for. It's very nice to see everyone just going out and about, relaxing, going outside. I mean, we've been locked, locked down in our houses for how long now? I hope that Omicron is actually the final <laughs> stage of this virus. To see such enjoyment, to see such happiness, I'm so happy that the business is booming. People can start making money. Our country is officially open. When last did I see such a such hecticness and business. I'm glad that we can get to come here and enjoy. Many scientists are also optimistic despite the low vaccination rate. Virologist Wolfgang Preiser says that many South Africans had already been infected with the coronavirus before the Omicron wave. Hospital data show that a prior coronavirus infection or vaccination provides protection against severe illness, also with the Omicron variant. Wenn man dann eine Situation erreicht, so wie hier derzeit, wo äh, praktisch alles entweder durchgemacht haben oder geimpft sind. Oder If you get to a situation like this, where nearly everyone has had it or has been vaccinated, then you can relax. Of course, on the other hand, it is summer here. And the big school break took place over most of the fourth wave. Vacation was shorter in Europe. School is starting again and it's winter when people spend much more time together indoors. Those are considerable differences. That's why you can't just say, we expect things to go like they have in South Africa. Preiser hopes that the pandemic could become endemic as with other coronaviruses if most of the population has a basic immunity from previous infection or vaccination. Ich hege sogar noch die Hoffnung, dass wir um regelmäßige Auffrischungs- oder Boosterimpfungen herumkommen. I still have hope that we can get around regular booster shots. I can well imagine that if everyone has basic immunity, possibly with a specific Omicron booster, and another variant doesn't come as a nasty surprise, then we can keep our immunity up by natural means via regular reinfections with the coronavirus. Um, dass wir dann durch uh, regelmäßige Wiederinfektionen uh, mit dem Coronavirus unsere Immunität sozusagen auf natürlicher Weise erhalten und dann wirklich mit dem Virus uh, leben können. No one wants to think about more mutations right now in the milk restaurant and bar. Certainly not owner Sipelo Khalivane. He already has big plans and wants to expand to other cities. He believes that the prospects for South Africa once again look good. 
We can speak now to Shabir Madi. He's a professor of vaccinology at Witwatersand University in Johannesburg. Thank you for joining us. Uh, now, you tweeted that South Africa has reached a turning point in the pandemic. What did you mean by that? Uh, thank you for having me. So I think experience uh, during the course of this wave, which was dominated by Omicron, very much shows a decoupling of infections uh, and severe disease and death. Where, as you've correctly reported, this time around, especially in the province which was initially the epicenter of the Omicron outbreak, the Gauteng province, the number of hospitalizations that transpired was one third compared to what transpired during the course of the Delta variant wave. And many of those hospitalizations this time around were actually what I refer to as incidental infections, in that people were being admitted for other reasons and were just uh, coincidentally testing positive. Hmm. But more striking was that the mortality rate, the number of people that have died during the course of this particular wave in the Gauteng province, contributes to less than 5% of all of the COVID-19 deaths that have transpired since the start of the pandemic. Uh, in contrast, the Delta variant wave, which was our previous wave, contributed to 50% all of okay. the deaths that have transpired since the start of the pandemic. So we've seen a complete decoupling of infections, severe disease and death. And that is despite the relatively low vaccination rate in South Africa. And if you look uh, across Africa, only around 10% of people are fully vaccinated. So what do you think this Omicron wave might mean for other African countries? Yeah, so it is despite very modest uh, vaccine coverage. Uh, but unfortunately, inadvertently, what has transpired in South Africa and probably many other African countries is that a large percentage of the population have developed immunity and particularly protection against severe disease and death because of past infection. Mm. So just prior to the onset of the Omicron wave, when we had conducted a, a serial survey where we test for presence of past, where we test for presence of antibody as a proxy of past infection, we showed that in this province, and the same thing would apply to most other parts of the country, 70% of people had actually been infected during the course of the first three waves. So the number of people that have developed immunity against COVID-19 and particularly against severe disease and death is far higher than the number of people that have been vaccinated in settings such as our own. And the same thing probably exists across the continent. Okay. Where more than three quarters of the population have developed immunity because of past infection. What about in countries where there are where there's a high number of people who have been vaccinated? How worried do you think that they should be about this Omicron wave? Well, I would expect a similar sort of decoupling to materialize, uh, because if it doesn't materialize, then that calls into question uh, the value of vaccines. And I do believe that vaccines, and as has been shown in fact studied in studies from South Africa on vaccines, these vaccines have not performed too well in protecting against mild disease due to Omicron. But when it comes to protecting against severe disease, the Pfizer vaccine, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine as examples, still confers high levels of protection against severe disease and death. So even in countries where there haven't been lots of high, lots of infections in the past, but where there's high, high vaccine coverage, I also anticipate the same sort of decoupling to materialize. Vaccinologist Shabir Madi speaking to us from Johannesburg. Thank you very much for sharing your insights with us today. Thank you. And we are now joined by Wolfgang Preiser, who was in that report. He's head of medical virology at Stellenbosch University in Cape Town. Professor, there are differences between South Africa's and Europe's experiences with Omicron, as you mentioned in that report. How much of a model then can South Africa be for other countries in terms of how this variant will play out? Well, we being the first country to be hit by the Omicron wave, I, I think, you know, there are there are many uh, lots of, of useful information to be learned from South Africa. For example, the uh, extreme contagiousness, the, the rapid spread, the high numbers of infections caused. And I think that is playing out now wherever Omicron has reached. Um, one has to be careful uh, when it comes to, to uh, assessing the whole picture. Um, I think the report uh, brought across very nicely the, the universal sense of relief here um, in that we were expecting a, a very bad uh, a Christmas season once again with lots of hospitalizations and severely ill patients and that hasn't played out. Um, I have to say though that we are still seeing patients um, ser seriously ill and even dying uh, from Omicron infection. So it's not a case of a, of a common cold illness, but on the other hand, 
a lot of South Africans have uh, pre-existing immunity, sadly not so much due to vaccination, but rather due to having had COVID before, and that is really protective. There is also uh, very likely a role played by the virus itself, which is less virulent than the previous uh, variant, especially Delta, which was particularly virulent and, and caused more severe disease. Um, but that is not enough to rely on. Uh, so what one really wants is to have some underlying immunity. Mm -hmm. And I have to say also that South Africa has p paid a very high price uh, in that many people uh, died during the previous wave simply because they could not protect themselves from becoming infected due to the poor socioeconomic circumstances of their lives. And that is clearly different in many European countries where vaccination rates are much higher. So that is, of course, good news. But those people who have not been vaccinated are very unlikely mm. to have had COVID previously and therefore are unprotected and may still develop severe disease even from Omicron. So uh, then there are differences, of course, as you mentioned, but what can other countries then, then take away from South Africa when it comes to life after Omicron? I think what you can what you can see firstly is is extreme propensity to spread and how difficult it is to protect from against that and how protective immunity is. So I think the emphasis must clearly be on vaccination, vaccination and booster doses right now, because that is the best bet against Omicron and chances are against any future variants uh, as well. So even though we can't predict how they will play out, uh, it is, it is you know, pretty certain that uh, whatever the variant may be in future, if they are future variants, um, that uh, protection from uh, uh, vaccination uh, will, uh, you know, shield you from severe disease. And that mm. is our main purpose at the moment. Virologist Wolfgang Preiser in Cape Town. Thank you very much. Let's have a look at some of the other developments in the pandemic. France has reported its biggest one-day jump in hospitalization since November 2020. That was before vaccines were available. Health officials say they expect Omicron hospitalizations to peak by the end of January. Germany's top public health body says the country has now exceeded 8 million confirmed cases since the start of the pandemic. And Canada has become the latest country to approve Pfizer's antiviral pill against COVID-19.